My name is John Lemus, and this is The Right Place. Uh, first of all, I want to wish everybody a happy new year. Uh, our last show was last year, of course. I hope we have a good new year, and I hope we have a prosperous new year. Amen. There's a lot of things going on as, as a Republican. You know, we just took control of the Senate and the House, which is very exciting. What we do with it, uh, I have no idea, but <clears throat> I'm hoping that we get a few things done. It doesn't seem like the president's going to cooperate uh, with uh, the new regime, but we shall see. Anyway, I'm here today with Peter Hernandez. Peter, thank you for coming in. How you doing, John? Peter uh, recently won an election uh, for the school board in uh, San Benito County. And some of the questions that I always wonder or, or, or curious about is why people run for certain offices. Okay, like Peter ran for the school board and won, thank God. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's very excited about it and seems to be very involved. But what I want to ask Peter is normally when, when people run for these offices, there's several things. They either have an agenda you know, they see a problem, they want to get involved. Or they want it on their portfolio. In other words, they want it because they're looking in the future to uh, run for another office, maybe a mayor or assemblyman or move the, on up the ladder. So when you have all these things on your portfolio, you know, I was on the grand jury and I was a, a member of the school board and I was this and that, that it looks good on your, on your resume, right? Mm -hmm. So my question to you is, I know you're a busy man. You, you, you sell solar or something, mm, right? Correct. And you have a family. Correct. You have a wife. How many kids? Two kids or something? Three kids Three now. Three kids. Oh, my God. So you have three children and uh, a busy man trying to make a living. Uh, right. So what made you decide that you wanted to, to run for the school board? Did, did you have an agenda? Do you have a future in politics? Or are you thinking about a future in politics? or? So my perspective is, John, is um, just as it was from the beginning, my conviction was to be involved in my community. Um, it came down to education because, you know, like Ronald Reagan says, right, the, the, um, this generation, you know, one generation's uh, kids is the next generation's leaders, right? Absolutely, yeah. So we, we, to me, it really does have to do with an, a, with a, a good um, outcome. I mean, that really is my goal. I mean, a resume, I guess, could forward anybody's um, individual life, whether it's financially or whatever. But to me, a resume has no value unless there's actually something that you've done with that, right? The effect that you're trying to get, you know? I mean, I could easily say that I want to join, um, whether it becomes, whether it is being a school board member or a mayor, um, but unless I actually have results, then really there's no value behind it so me personally I'm, I'm all about taking baby steps I'm all about getting to know my community getting involved and not so much because I'm trying to get any personal gain out of it I believe if God blesses me with gain then that's on his hands not mine it's not for me to worry about absolutely my my worry is honestly just affecting a good cause in, in my the community that I live in I mean and that's just the bottom line and I think when you do things according to what is just and right then there will be benefits and it's not the f but just the same your goal isn't so much the benefits as it is just getting involved in what it takes to, to become what you what your you know what your aspirations are and that's affecting a good outcome with the community that you're dealing with and obviously in my community it's the children um, in our educational system and, and I believe that we need to be involved in our kids education I have a baby a nine-month-old and he's gonna be one day in the school system and I I want to I want to know um, that I had a uh, that I, I played part in setting up that foundation, right, and making sure that he's as prepared as any other kid in the school system to succeed. And that's really any parent's desire. So that's why, I mean, I have, I guess, a, a kind of an over, overall perspective as to why I, I got involved. And, um, and I do want my community to succeed. Well, I'll tell you, let me ask you this. What are the top three concerns that you have in the present school system, not nationally or statewide, but, but locally? The three top concerns? Um, 
I would say one is, you know, getting our, not so much getting our kids filled with information, but actually getting them educated to the point where they become, um, they basically prepare the, 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 the local economy and, and the worldwide economy, you know, or the country uh, so that they could be successful. So we can actually have entrepreneurs and businessmen and, you know, whether they or they become educators themselves, but they th they're the ones that set the infrastructure of our country to, you know, cr not only for individual prosperity, but as a whole, right? So that they become productive citizens. That's my number one, honestly. Um, and I think that we play a big part in it as individuals. You know, as, as school board members, we, we have a voice. We obviously vote on, on the direction. And I know that there's, there's uh, state standards that are required to follow. But um, I believe that when we have a good conscience, we're, we're going to try to at least guide it in the, in the direction that we best see fit, where we know that there's going to be a good effect. And the second one, um, I would say, is, is an individual accountability. I think that's extremely important as a kid. I know that I hear a lot about kind of the collective and, you know, ensure that, that when you're a community, there's a collective, but ultimately the individual plays part in that group. And as an individual, you, you know, as the Constitution states, right, as, as, as the Republican, um, you know, the, the representation in that Constitution is that, that these individuals have to have a form of uh, individual accountability, that they understand that they have a moral code to abide by so that they can exercise those, those rights and they make sure that they do good for the neighbor just as much as they do for themselves. So I would say individual accountability is a huge thing for me. Um, and that kind of creates the identity of this, of, of the individual. So I would say my third concern, and I know this almost seems more philosophical, but, um, well, except for the first one, but the third one is, is really that that kid has a strong foundation and I personally believe relationship is the key component in that foundation and what I mean by that is I'm a father and I understand that success in my kid is depends on the strength of our relationship right me not only providing for him but me um, or technically in a financial way but even in a way that he feels secure and safe um, and that he feels that he's going to be edified and built up but also held accountable so that strength of that relationship creates an environment for my kid to succeed. I think in the same way, that family type model should be a huge representation of what our school system should, should, should look like. Absolutely. Uh, and, I, and I appreciate that, and I appreciate the fact that you're involved. I mean, I think one of the problems that we have in our school system right now is there's a lot of parents that aren't involved. Uh, they send them off to school, and all of a sudden the teachers become parenting the children, basically, is what Correct. they're doing. Okay. <clears throat> but let me ask you a question. I was on the grand jury for six years. One of, one of our my bigger concerns, uh, and, and that district you're in is K through 12? Correct. K through 12? Oh, I'm, uh, K no, through eight, eight, I'm sorry. K through eight. And the K through eight, the last time I, I investigated the school system was because of, of budgetary problems, physical mm -hmm. problems, but it was the libraries were shut down mm -hmm. and the computer centers were shut down mm -hmm. is that still a problem uh actually the school district has done a lot better they've actually opened up um they, i can't remember exactly how it fashioned itself but i know that there's there's the libraries are available now um and that there was budgetary issues but we're actually starting to see a lot more uh, not only funding coming from the state but you know they've managed the budget the you know and Thanks to the previous board, you know they've actually made some good, strong fiscal decisions to keep that, that, um, the the money, you know, the reserves building up and stuff. So the computer learning systems systems are open. Are you trying to tell me that that's? I don't want to say the com computer learning systems, but I know the library got opened yeah. up. So they they there there is certain things that have been slowly but surely. And technically, um, things have changed in the way that the school district is structured. Um, like now you t technically don't have a computer learning center per se. You actually have uh, computers in the classroom. And you have iPads or something? They have, um, yeah, they have, uh, um, they call their Acer computers, Acer tablets. And I know f from firsthand experience, I walked in just this morning um, to our Hardin School and I got to visit some of the classrooms um, and I got to see that they're, they're, they are implementing in every class computers. I mean, part of their goal, part of our goal, I say they, but I'm part of the they, is uh, to get computers in every classroom so that way every kid has an opportunity for technology. I think, uh, I think it's not 
not only important for the children. I mean, every, everything's computers now. Everything's computers. And if, if you don't give some really good basic knowledge when it comes to computers, they're going to have a problem as, as they go through life. Correct. I also think it's easier on the teachers. I think teachers are much, much, it's much easier for them to teach children on a computer than it is on a chalkboard. You know, I, yeah. I really do think that. And uh, not only that, I think children like computers and they pay attention to what's going on a computer more than they do a Correct. chalkboard. Okay. Correct. And the computer can retain the information, and they can call it back up and look at it again and again and again. Exactly. So I'm a big, I'm a big fan of of these six year olds. I, I went into classes before, and there'd be six years old taking their tests on the computer. I mean, I was, I was amazed that children that young were had that much knowledge, <laughs> yeah. computer knowledge, you know. But I, I, I'm happy that that they're getting back into that, and I'm happy that their libraries are open. I think, and this is my personal opinion, by the way, and I'm probably gonna make a lot of people in Hollister mad when I say this, but I think libraries are gonna be a thing of the past. Uh, there's no reason to go to a library, as far as I'm concerned, I can find out anything I want on my computer. Anything, literally anything. So, I think there's, a, a segment of the of, of the population that still like to go to libraries and still like to research books and read books, but I mean now everybody's got a Kindle or a computer or something, uh, so I know that uh, right here in Gilroy they just spent a lot of money on a library right here, so obviously long term somebody feels that we're still going to have libraries or libraries are going to be part of our life. My personal opinion is I I really have no need for a library anymore because of my computer. But a couple of things. First of all, I want to thank you again for getting involved. And it seems like I talked to you prior to the show, and it seems like you're really involved. I mean, you are really taking time because this is a this is not a paid position, right? Correct. There's no pay here. Mm -mm. Okay. Do you get insurance or anything? They give us insurance. I actually haven't opted into the insurance yet. I'm, I'm looking at it, but. Um, it's not my, you know, it's not something that it matters so much to me. Um, that's not why I did it. Basically. Right, right. No, I understand that. But you I know, mean, I'm just looking for some benefit other than uh, the benefits that you talked about with, you know, helping benefit your children. Yeah. But I know I was on the grand jury and we actually get paid on the grand jury. Not a whole lot of money, believe me. Yeah. You know, maybe they get paid us every quarter. Maybe it was a $200 check or some yeah. damn thing, right? And we spent a lot of time in the grand jury. So you really have to be committed That's to right. doing that. And, and there's a, not a lot of people, especially at your age, when you're still out there trying to kick butt and make a living. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? Uh, lots of times, like even on the grand jury, most of the people on there are retired or, or, or in a position where they have the time or they were women at their husband's work or something and they didn't have to, to mm -hmm. work. And their children were out of the house or something, you know. But I, I think it's it's uh, admirable that you've taken on this when you're still in your money, what they call your money making years. You know what years, I mean? Yeah. Because uh, those twenties, thirties, and forties, you know, your graph is supposed to go like this, and then levels off in your fifties, of course, and after your sixties, it drops off. So you're still in that 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 uh, area where you're you're making money and you're going up that hill right? yeah <laughs> so so um well one thing i wanted to mention about that john is honestly it's a very retrospect type perspective that i'm taking only because you know as a christian man i have a very strong conviction that i mean ultimately as you know as individuals we don't live in a bubble right there's an effect that happens when um when you don't do something when you're in an environment right you receiving of the benefits, right? And as Republicans, I'm pretty sure all, all of us can acknowledge that, you know, we want all of us to kind of play part in it. But the hardest part is, is doing it with an honest conviction, right? It takes for us to, to kind of enter in the environment, see where it's broken and see why it's broken till we actually start reflecting on how we can play part in, in reconciling that environment. And that really is 
what 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 my what my conviction is and that's the honest truth i mean years ago when i first started volunteering I'm, i knocked on the window and i just said hey i'm here now i, I want to volunteer and i know that seems kind of weird but when you're when you see how there's these disconnecting fibers in the environment that you live in when you see kids who are very introverted and they find themselves with with um you know maybe they're, they're have a, they come from a broken family you know their, their father's not around you see these kind of things you kind of get an understanding of why there's a huge need and honestly um, to do things in a way that you're actually trying to benefit those individuals you see how not only does it affect them but affects their parents it affects the rest of the community if you have a healthy family then you have not only people that are understanding their own you know uh, responsibility they're putting money back into the system because they're they have a job right they're doing the responsible thing they're they're paying their taxes their their kids are doing right by you know their which lowers crime so there's such a huge perspective that applies to simply doing the right thing simply being part you of that what? community I, i'm going to thank you for coming in and thank you for your commitment because like i said before there's many many people take these positions on for other reasons than what you did okay so I realize that you've taken this position on to, tri to really do the job and help. And I want to thank you for coming in. You're We're welcome. going to take a break. We're going to be right back. I'm going to talk to you in just a minute about something. I don't know what it's going to be, but it's going to be something. Don't go away. <laughs> Uh, I want to thank you for watching the show today. You know, Peter Hernandez is, is a good example of, of what everyone should be doing, and, and that's trying to get involved in your community, uh, get involved in what's going on around you. And I, every time I have a show, I tell you, I tell you this, get involved in your community and find out what's going on around you. You know, I hate, I hate it when people something comes up or a bill gets passed or a new law comes in effect or something and they say, well, when did that happen? How did that happen? Why did that happen? Why did I know about it? Well, you didn't know about it because you sat home watching TV and not paying attention to what's going on in your own community. That's why it happened. You need to pay attention. There's a lot of stuff going on in this country, in this world that you need to know about. We have a very nationally we have a very, very, very bad situation going all over the world. You know, we're having attacks. We're having uh, these terrorists attacking people and hit, in New York hitting people with axes and just crazy stuff. I mean, absolutely crazy. You know, and I think there's so much of it going on that we 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 become desensitized to people's heads being cut off and people getting chopped up with an ax and stabbed in the back. I mean, it's almost like it's becoming commonplace. And when that kind of stuff happens, that's a scary situation, folks. It really is. I mean, uh, I'm an NRA member and I have been for many, many years and, and will continue to be. And I truly believe two things. I think you should get involved with, uh, with some firearms, learn how to use them, uh, learn how to use them safely. My, I really believe that if I, I both my granddaughters I sent to uh, martial arts school, karate. They're both, one of them's a brown belt, one of them's a black belt. I'm gonna tell you something, if I had a daughter, I would make sure that they can, can uh, defend themselves. Because when they leave home and they go to college or they go someplace else, another town to work, and you don't have any control of them over anymore of when they come in or when they go out or anything else, they're going to have to know how to defend themselves. Please do that for your children. Listen, God bless you. God bless America. And we're going to see you next time.